So in what may probably be the least surprising news ever, Joe Biden, the guy who naively claimed that Republicans will all of a sudden have an epiphany once Donald Trump is out of office, who even considered a Republican running mate at one time, or at least said he was open to it, who has repeatedly praised Republicans over and over again, is reportedly considering Republicans for cabinet positions. Now, this isn't shocking news, but it still is extremely infuriating, and it's an idiotic strategy. So according to Politico, Joe Biden's transition team is vetting a handful of Republicans for potential cabinet positions, despite doubts it will win him new support from the right and the risk it will enrage the left. Reaching across the aisle to pick senior members of his administration could shore up Biden's credentials as a unity candidate. Yeah, right. A message he's made a cornerstone of his campaign. Past presidents, including George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, and Barack Obama, have all done the same. But but that tradition died with President Donald Trump, and liberal Democrats are already warning that a Republican pick, even a moderate one, could sow distrust within the party before Biden even takes office. My primary concern is that he involves people in the cabinet who push back against corporate power and support a massive economic stimulus and the broad provision of health care, said David Siegel, the executive director of Demand Progress, a liberal advocacy group. Unfortunately, there are no prominent Republicans I know of who are on board with that agenda. Never Nevertheless, one person close to the Biden transition said it remains a priority to have options from different parts of the ideological spectrum for the former vice president to consider. That person and another official familiar with the transition deliberations confirmed to Politico that Biden staffers are analyzing some Republicans' backgrounds and resumes as they compile shortlists of candidates for high-profile cabinet positions. The goal is to have some GOP options among the finalists that Biden would choose from after the election, among the names being flipped for possible Biden cabinet posts are Meg Whitman, the CEO of Quibi and former CEO of eBay, and former Ohio Governor John Kasich, shocker, both of whom spoke at August's Democratic National Convention. Massachusetts GOP Governor Charlie Baker and former Senator Jeff Flake have also been mentioned, as has former Representative Charlie Dent, who resigned from Congress in 2018 and became a lobbyist. Wow. Uh, when asked for comment, a spokesperson for the Biden transition said only that the team is not making any personnel decisions before the November 3rd election, but stressed that diversity of ideology and background is a core value of the transition. Is that so? So are there any socialists that Biden's team is considering? Are there any communists that he's considering? Any anarchists? Because, I mean, if we truly want to capture the entire range of the political spectrum, then surely you would have communists advising you, right? You'd have some individuals who uh, subscribe to modern monetary theory, Stephanie Kelton. Hell, maybe you'd have some pretty uh, prominent progressives, such as Bernie Sanders. I mean, when they say ideological diversity, understand that they're talking about a binary choice between right-wingers and um, far right wingers, Democrats and Republicans. That's what they're talking about. So let's be clear about that. Uh, so first of all, whether or not this story is true, I do believe it because the fact that his team is being coy and they're saying, well, we're considering some Republicans, but I mean, we're considering everyone. Like that's all that we need to know. And this isn't that surprising. So I'm not necessarily going to pick apart whether or not this story is credible. I, I think it's probably uh, pretty uh pretty obvious that biden will be choosing some republicans um at least to be part of his transition team who knows if they'll actually make it into the cabinet but here's the thing biden is 100 percent um delusional he has repeatedly insisted that republicans will have an epiphany we talked about that at the beginning of this segment but after he said that and he got some pushback because people called him naive rightfully so he even doubled down so he genuinely believes or is at least Stupid enough to think that Republicans will warm up to him and Democrats once Trump is out of office. But this is bizarre to me because Joe Biden is part of Obama's administration. They were in power for eight years. And what was their parting gift to you? They literally stole a Supreme Court seat from you. They're trying to jam through another Supreme Court confirmation before the election. They don't want to work with you. It doesn't matter what you propose. It doesn't matter how often you meet them in the middle. The Republican Party is going to obstruct everything that you do, and even if you literally adopt one of their policies, they will reject it, because you are bad by definition, by default. So they're not going to accept what you want. If you try to, you know, extend an olive branch, they're going to shoot it down. If Biden wins, 
this is not going to be because Biden ran a winning campaign. It's because Donald Trump lost. I really felt like Trump going into this election, he had that incumbent advantage. Uh, but had it not been for COVID-19, something that none of us have experienced before, and the subsequent economic crash, I think Trump probably would likely be sailing towards re-election right now. I mean, it really depends. You can't really say for sure. But, you know, if Biden ends up becoming the president, it's not going to necessarily be because he won this election. It's going to be because Donald Trump lost this election. Now, that's a distinction without a difference, and I don't think he cares. But look, this is going to be something that we are going to expect from corporate Democrats. They're reaching out to Republicans because I think that ideologically they agree with Republicans on quite a bit. So understand, um, we know exactly what we're getting with Joe Biden. The benefit is that with Obama, he at least pretended to be progressive. And that was troubling because it, it kind of made all of us get a little bit complacent. But with Joe Biden, he's coming in straight up as a Republican light candidate. So we know uh, we don't give him a chance. We don't wait to see what he's going to do. No, immediately, like if he actually wins this election, his first day in office, he needs to be pushed as hard as we possibly can push him. Now, he's going to resist change from the left. Um, he probably won't be inclined to listen to the left. In fact, I don't think he's going to listen to the left if history, you know, uh, proves right again. But we make his life a living hell if he's elected. Yes, he is the lesser of two evils. We want Donald Trump to be, to be defeated. We want him to become president because he's the only person that stands between Donald Trump and the White House for another four years. But understand, that doesn't make him an inherently good candidate. And that's what articles like this prove. You don't need to suspend criticism and not be objective just because you're too afraid to like make sure we're not helping Donald Trump. No, we can be realistic. And I think it's actually healthier to be realistic about what voters can expect with Joe Biden. He's going to be a terrible president and he's going to cause lots of damage. But luckily for him, um, less damage than Donald Trump. And I think a lot of people recognize this. So, I mean, this just shows... Um, this isn't going to be, you know, a period of time where you're going to go to brunch. You're going to have to fight the entire time. But still, fighting Biden, obviously, is more preferable than fighting Donald Trump. Because Donald Trump, just like, there's no chance that we can persuade him to do anything. But at least with Joe Biden, you know, maybe, maybe there's a chance that we can at least put enough pressure on him that we can stop him from doing shitty things. Like, I'm not under the delusion that he's going to adopt progressive policies like Medicare for All, but maybe there's a chance, a small chance, that we can stop him from doing the most harmful things that he probably wants to do. And I'll leave that there because I don't want to dwell on this too much. Again, this isn't a shocking story to me, but still, uh, we've got to talk about it because I'm not going to bite my tongue because, you know, uh, Joe Biden is the one person who stands between Donald Trump and another four years. I'm not going to bite my tongue. Um, it's incumbent on him to win people over. And that means you don't be idiotic in your strategy. You don't piss off the people who you need currently for a really small margin of voters who you're not going to win over. You know, you, you, you know, you know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.